Well, we may be seeing more of this, right? The future is now. Harvard is hiring a new teacher for its introductory level coding course this fall, but it's not a teacher in the sense that you would think. It's an AI chatbot. The university plans to incorporate chatbots to help students find errors in their coding, answer questions, offer feedback, and help students learn more about the coding process, right? A computer helping you learn about computers, essentially. Joining me now, David Malin. He is a Gordon McKay professor of computer science at Harvard University and helping to oversee this new course and the chatbot. Thank you for being with us. Um, so, how did this come about initially? Sure, thank you for having me. So we have a long tradition in this class, CS50 at Harvard, of using software to better support the TAs who help teach the class and also the students who take the class. So for us, this AI chatbot is really just an evolution of the sorts of tools that we've provided to, for students to for some time. Uh, it's suffice it to say, when you have hundreds of students on campus, and in our case, via open courseware and platforms like edX, we have thousands of students online, uh, we get quite a few frequently asked questions. So among the goal of the chatbot is to answer as many of those questions correctly for students as it can. So the chatbot is just like we're seeing on screen, basically a texting back and forth. It's not like an actual AI helping to teach and advise students. Not like, quite like in that. the sense of like so a face, a person, a name, right? No, it doesn't have any physical form just yet. It is indeed very similar in spirit to ChatGPT like you're seeing on the screen. But unlike ChatGPT and tools like it right now that tend to be too helpful by literally just telling you anything and everything that you might want to know about some subject, what we've been doing over the past few months is trying to teach the bot to be a little more like a teacher, being a good teacher, leading you to an answer, but not just handing it to a student. Right, because the risk would be students would become too reliant on it, right? Turning to the chatbot to do their work. Exactly. Okay, so what are some checks and balances that you all are putting in place um, to mitigate those potential risks? Yeah, so much of what's happening right now in the space of ChatGPT and large language models in general is the ability to feed these types of programs prompts, uh, instructions in English that essentially give the bot a personality or guide it to a certain behavior. So the sort of prompt that we're providing to our own bot is akin to teaching it Assume that you are a teacher of an introductory computer science course. Answer students' questions in simple terms. Do not provide them with more than just a few lines of code. The goal being really to put downward pressure on just how helpful ChatGPT and other tools might otherwise be by default. So the goal is to make it much more akin to a good teacher and not just a, a tutor handing you the answers. Right, just a, a way to support. So it hasn't been put in action with the students yet. It will soon. But what has been some of the feedback um, as you've developed it and watched people use it? Sure. So we actually have been beta testing it, so to speak, with our summer school students at Harvard Summer School. So we have about 70 students here on campus and off campus using it thus far. And it's been pretty darn good so far. Our goal has been to have this bot answer as many as 80% of students' questions. And I dare say it's probably approaching 90 or so percent. It's proving very good when it comes to curricular content questions about computer science, about programming. Some of the early bumps in the road that we ran into were that it was less good at it answering administrative questions, questions about deadlines or policies, because those things tend to change semester by semester. So insofar as these large language models have really been trained primarily on historical data, we've been uh, improving it over the past few weeks to know a little something more about present day policies and dates as well. What about the risk of getting hacked? Um, what are some safeguards that you all put in place to prevent that? Yeah, so this is uh, integrated into our own software infrastructure that students already use for writing their code. Um, the bot itself is proxied, so to speak, through one of our own servers so that we have an ability to keep an eye on things centrally in that way. And we also have an ability to analyze the quality of the responses that are coming through. And indeed, we pretty much have been doing this every day, such that if we see the bot being too helpful or even too inaccurate, we can then put in some safeguards and measures for the next day onward that will guide guide it toward giving better solutions. But it's very much access restricted to only being able to take input from uh, a few different modes of uh, technology. And just a couple seconds here left, Professor, but um, this is being used for coding. Could it be used in other classes at Harvard as well? Absolutely, and that's our hope actually for the fall semester and the spring is to collaborate with some colleagues in the humanities, the arts, social sciences, physical sciences. It really is not something that's restricted to computer science. That just happens to be our own domain.
Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.